Uh, we'll wait for Lori to come back before we start the meeting. I'm going to call to order the June 26, 2023 special meeting of the Chino Valley Planning and Zoning Commission. Um, I'm going to say the pledge tonight. Um, can we get a roll call? Because we got a mess up here with people on Zoom and whatnot. Commissioner Welker? I'm here. Commissioner Penn? Absent. Vice Chair Pasiak? Absent. Absent. Chair Merritt? Here. Commissioner Metters? Here. Commissioner Switzer? Here. He's on the Zoom. Oh, yes. Commissioner Zamudio is absent also. Thank you. Just, we have a quorum. Just for public information, some folks are out of the country and some folks are ill. So now that we have that, we've got a quorum. I'm going to lead the pledge tonight, break tradition a little bit. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. We're going to move uh, forward to item C1, which is the 2040 general plan. The special meeting of the Planning and Zoning Commission to discuss and forward a recommendation to the Town Council regarding the state mandated requirement to have in place a Town General Plan. The 2040 General Plan is a rewrite of the 2014 General Plan currently in place and due to expire next year. We have staff reports and consultant reports. Who wants to lead off? So I'm going to introduce you to the team that's here tonight. Matrix is our consulting team that actually became an extension of staff. So they weren't people that just went down the hill and did their own thing. They became very involved in what we were doing. And we have many of the steer active steering committee members here tonight as well. So they will, uh, the M Matrix team will do a presentation and then you'll do the regular questions and answers. And my suggestion is that with each question, we just stop and let Matrix answer the question. So that's what we'll do tonight. So when the, if there's any question from the, after we open the public portion of the meeting, Correct. then we'll answer that question as it's asked in order to put to bed any questions or problems that may arise. All right. Celeste, are you up? Mr. Chair, Merritt and Commissioners, it's an honor on behalf of Matrix Design Group to be here this evening. We uh, were very, very excited to uh, be here to present the 2040 General Plan, Make It Chino. Uh, with us tonight, or joining you tonight, is not only myself as the project director, but really, I may be the person presenting but the next three people are the key people who have really been doing the heavy lifting. Mr. Brent Cox, the project manager, Mr. Ed Boyk, who was the deputy project manager, and Heather Garbarino, who was the lead planner. So the final draft, Make It Chino 2040 general plan, you, I, you just heard me, I introduced the Matrix team, but it wasn't just Matrix who developed this plan. As you all know, it was the public it was the steering committee, it was all of you, and then um, the town council as well. As you know, we're moving forward. This project and endeavor that you are um, going forward with the update is because of a mandate and requirement by state statute. Uh, you'll see it there, 9-461- or period 05-06. should know that by heart. And it states that all general plans in jurisdictions in the state of Arizona need to be updated every 10 years. And your current general plan, which was completed back in 2014, is going to be expiring next year, as you stated. Um, and there, you know, there's nothing wrong with any general plan, but when the reason why it's updated every 10 years is because there's changes. And that plan did you well for the last nine years. 
and it was developed for the purpose and, it, and, and the vision of the people back then. Now there was a little change in the vision, and so this general plan is focused on the new vision for your community. So I don't want anyone to think that the 2014 plan was not um, a good plan. Um, does the other item is, is there's an opportunity um, to do a rewrite. So we did do a rewrite because the vision is much different than it was back in 2014. As you know, the general plan is made up of three different primary components. The first one is a future land use plan map. That is a legal component of the overall plan. The elements, which are goals and policies, that's the second legal component of the plan. And the implementation plan, which is not required within the general plan, but is basically your playbook to make sure you, as a community, move forward with implementing um, the different goals and policies that you have um, hopefully agreed upon within this general plan update. So as you know, it's a long-term plan. It's very comprehensive, but very general all at the same time. So we go this deep, very, very, very shallow, and we go very horizontal, and we address a multitude of, of topics, and you'll see here in a moment. What the general plan is not, it is not part of your unified development ordinance, basically zoning that a lot of people relate to. It's not regulatory in nature, and it does not modify what you current what people the um, part uh, the property owners have today as their existing uses. So the big difference between the 2014 and this proposed general plan in front of you today is the overall vision. So that's the number one vision of, of, of what your community was stating. There's been changes as far as the growth. There's a, there was a lot more density in your 2014 plan, um, and it didn't address many of the items that we heard from all of the different um, individuals, organizations, groups, and um, uh, committees that were part of the development of the plan. It was truly, I would say, hands down, a community-led plan, and you'll see why as we move forward with the presentation. The community engagement component was very, it was multiple and in different avenues and methods, as you'll see here, from having the website with all of the different um, educational materials. It had online um, questionnaires and ID places for issue identification. Of course, the overall project branding, but you'll see a number of meetings and opportunities for everybody to provide input. In fact, you'll see that we had a total of three different joint council and commission meetings associated with the general plan to date, not counting tonight. Um, we had two very, very successful public open houses, six different steering committee meetings, and 10 focus group meetings. Overall, you'll see that we heard over 350 people commented um, and provided direct direction on the uh, overall uh, technical components, the goals and policy, as well as the uh, future land use map. Um, the town did a great job in doing notifications to the entire town. Um, over five, almost 6,000 notifications went out, and that's um, through postcard mailings for both of the public um, meetings. There were press releases, there was social media, um, there was uh, a, a number of other types of of uh, notifications that are not even listed here in the uh, in the slide tonight. So what did we hear from everybody? You know, the first one, and I'm going to go by topic for land use. We heard that that rural character, that rural community, that small town feel was very very important to all of your constituents, your citizens. Uh, the importance of making sure that there's opportunities for housing at all um, levels and attainable housing, a mix of housing. Uh, so making sure that at uh, median income uh, uh, families with children had the opportunity to be able to move back to the town if they went to college and they, and they got married. So that mix of, uh, of housing is definitely important. We heard that 
density was really important too. In in order to maintain that rural character, that they the majority of the people came together and stated, you know, multifamily isn't what our community is about. It's not what our town is about. And so eight dwelling units per acre was the max number of dwelling units that they felt was uh, appropriate for that attainable housing um, and the mix of rural residential as well. And we'll get to that. And then, of course, 89 being really your gateway, not only north, south, but throughout the, the center of your community and make sure that that was a, a key core and that there was uh, branding and wayfinding throughout that main corridor. And the other big takeaway was transitioning. Um, transitioning between higher density uses to lower density uses, making sure that you looked into make, uh, having buffers and screening where appropriate, where there were different type of um, uses. In regards to circulation, as you all know, one of the highest priority is road maintenance. Well, in order to really focus on having road maintenance um, as a top priority, there is uh, the need for having a transportation master plan and really to make sure they don't lose, the town doesn't lose the component of safety. And safety not only with vehicles, but also pedestrians and the equestrian world as well. Talking about equestrian, parks, recreation, and natural resources is an area that was really important to the majority of your citizens. Um, out the outdoors, the dark skies were critical. And so throughout what, what, what they stated was they wanted connectivity for trails, multi-purpose type of trails. They wanted us to prioritize um, for all of you that open space was critical and integral with the, throughout the entire future land use map and that recreation can be an opportunity for regional tourism as well. Community services and facilities uh, focused on water. That they, everybody was very focused on making sure that we had enough water for future growth within the town. And to focus on what are those different um, facilities that were required to, uh, to um, keep up with growth. And a town center was one of those key uh, facilities that was brought forward. Economic development. Um, the key for economic development was to really maintain that rural and small town community character is to really attract um, businesses that were more of the mom and pop type of businesses, not the big box of course, um, but also to, uh, to uh, industries that really focused on what was important to the community and the vision. So agriculture, agritourism, um, and other uh, medical was another one so that we heard. And so the other component is to make sure we heard that, to make sure we do have commercials so there is revenue through taxes so we can maintain all the roads and we can provide those facilities and other services the town provides to um, to the entire community. So the general plan organization, you'll see here there's eight different chapters. There's the introduction, number two was the community engagement, and the next five were elements. And each of one of those elements is a topic umbrella. Land use, circulation, parks and recreation and natural resources, community services and facilities, and economic development. And then the final, <coughs> chapter is the implementation and administration component of the plan. So you'll see here a breakout of which one of the elements were required by the state, that's the column in the middle, and which ones were elective um, that your town identified as were very, very important to your community, especially for this general plan. And so we bundled and basically bundled them in groups that were appropriate and relevant to each other, and that's how we came up with the five different plan elements. So you see weaved in there is um, community services, conservation, um, water resources, uh, growth areas. So those are all addressed within each of the five different elements. So the future land use map. You'll see here the future land use map it is a little different than your 2014 plan, or the plan that was developed in 2014, I should say. And to give you an overview, 
there are several new categories, land use categories, in uh, your in this 2040 plan. And you'll see the residential land use categories capture the vision of the community uh, in regards to the lower density, rural residential, the ranch type of uses, and then as far as um, the multifamily, no more than eight dwelling units per acre in specific areas where appropriate, and um, the two different types of commercial. One would be the neighborhood commercial, which we all know is grocery stores, dry cleaners, um, and such, and then the regional commercial. Regional commercial is the opportunity to um, attract others from other communities, tourists, and such, and bring the money and the revenue into your community. And then um, the two, industrial and open space. So if you step back and you look at the map and you, to the right here, um, the key is 89. 89 um, has basically the focus of the density for commercial, a, a little bit of industrial, and your multifamily um, t in densities and uses. But the key component are what's called these horizontal multi-use areas, which are in purple. And those purple uh, areas are called centers. And you have six different centers. And on 89, you have a center at the bottom called the South Gateway Center. You have a center at the top, which is the North Gateway Center. And then the two centers that are the two centers that are in, in the middle of 89, in the middle of your community, one is the historic center and the other one is the, I forgot, the uptown center. Go from memory. And then um, to your right, of course, you, we have the old home manor center and then to the south there, the Peavine center. Each one of those centers have a different character and they, provide a different mix of uses that are appropriate for each one of those. We highly recommend that you move forward and it's in the implementation plan, there's also a policy, that for each one of those centers, you move forward, forward with an area development plan. In addition, you'll see what we heard from the community and what is illustrated here in the plan, everything to the, or the majority of the uses to the left of 89 outside of the corridor, are very rural um, residential uses, one dwelling unit per acre. And then to the right of 89, we call that more of the moderate residential densities. It's a mix of the one dwelling unit per acre um, to the neighborhood residential, which is one to four dwelling unit per acre. And then all the way to the right, you'll see the, the light green component, and that is what we would, what is called ranch, rural ranch, agricultural uses. The difference between this general plan and the 2014 plan is the 2014 plan identified that area as your growth area, your future growth area. So you'll see here um, the community, we heard from the community, they really wanna preserve that for very, very, very rural um, uh, uses, at one dwelling unit per four acres at a minimum. And then of course to the top, the, um, just north of the North Gate Gateway Center, there's the proposed 980-acre state park. And I think that provides you a pretty good overview of, in summary, very quickly, a future land use map. We also gave you a breakdown of the number of acres by each one of the different land use categories and the estimated developable units, dwelling units, for each one of those um, land use categories. As you all know, we presented in the past, open space by state law has to allow every property owner to have, um, or to be allowed to be, to build one dwelling unit per acre. Um, in most cases, we would say that it probably will be open space. We hope it will. And then to the right is a little comparison with the national average, how the town compared to the national average with communities of your size. And you'll see there you're pretty much in, um, in sync with the percentages. You have almost 6% more acres in open space, and you have about 5% less in the commercial area. So the next part of our presentation this evening is to quickly go over the goals and policies component of each of the five different elements. So 
what you'll see here is I went through what we heard from the community and you'll see through each, um, each of these different elements that we're gonna be t uh, presenting tonight. We heard the, um, the citizens, we heard all of you and these policies and these, the goals do capture um, the majority of everything that was um, presented and or it was addressed. So the one component is, or the one um, disclaimer I wanna put here is we only have a few of the goals and policies for each one of the elements. So we're just highlighting some of the key ones. You'll see that we have um, land uses are buffered. We have a policy or a goal, I should say, and other policies for um, buffering of uh, different types of land uses that are not compatible. Another one was encourage attainable housing, and that was going back to what we heard from the public as well, is making sure that there are incentive programs that focus on um, attainable housing. And you could do that by many different ways that don't even cost that much money. You could change um, your, your development review process. You could expedite it. And so that will assist in um, attaining a, uh, or encouraging attainable housing. And alternative standards also will assist there. And there is a number of others as well. Your design guidelines are gonna be really, really important for your horizontal multi-use areas. Those horizontal multi-use areas are those six different centers that I just presented that are part of the future land use map. And I talked about the area development plans. Well, in those area development plans, each one of those area development plans we're recommending should have a component or a section for design guidelines. Again, each one of them has their own unique character. And then the rural, preserving the rural char character, the goal, and there's a number of policies that do support it, this specific goal um, throughout the, um, the general plan. There is one change we would like to, to um, recommend this evening to the general plan that is currently in front of you, and that is for policy land use 8.4. And why we're rec recommend recommending a change here is we thought that if we reworded it, it would provide additional clarification um, than the existing language. So I'd like to read it. It's in regards to the 980 acre state park. It says, if the 980 acres are not designated as a state park per state legislation, then the future land use map for the 980 acres will revert to the alternate future land use, which is illustrated in figure 3-2, which is to your right. Circulation. Some of the key goals for circulation, you'll see to the right, um, that is the circulation plan. It has both existing and proposed roadway networks. Um, the proposed are dashed, red are the proposed arterials, and blue dash are the proposed collector roadways. And you'll see there, it, um, it is pretty intuitive. It provides east-west and north and north-south um, connectivity, the grid system more or less throughout your town. Um, one of the most uh, important, we would say, policies is to move forward and develop a transportation master plan that would also have a capital improvement plan and maintenance program part of that as well that would address maintenance of roads. Another the one um, that uh, another policy that uh, we that's in the general plan is um, going forward and establishing a sidewalk development program. And that sidewalk development program would identify specific areas within your town that require different sidewalks or different multi-purpose um, types of trails uh, for the safety of your citizens and for the different types of uses, if they're mixed use to just more of the open space type of um, connectivity. And then uh, another policy is to prioritize that road maintenance. Again, reinforcing road maintenance a couple times throughout the different goals and policies that are within the general plan. The parks, recreation, and natural resources element, the goals and policies that you'll see here, we do have the um, parks and recreation plan here that has both the existing um, parks and open space as well as the proposed. You'll see here that the proposed um, is inclusive of the 980 acre state park. 
But in addition to that, there, are, there is a proposed trail um, in addition to your existing trails. And that propose, proposed trail goes up Granite Creek and the crossed um, Road 4 North, just uh, abutting um, the old home, yeah, old home Manor um, Center. So there's connectivity and then obviously connecting up with Peavine Trail up to the state park. So the key policy that we have there is to develop a parks, trails, and open space master plan as part of the implementation as well. Um, and then, and that will provide the direction and the strategies um, in regards to how you're going to move forward with each one of those proposed items. You'll see here th and throughout the policies within the general plan that we didn't propose a lot of parks. Um, I should say town parks, and why is that? Because that is going to be a major um, cost to the town. So there are policies within the general plan that promote parks within master plan communities, um, larger master plan communities, or even the small master plan communities. So they are able to maintain those parks um, for not only the community, but they need to be open to the adjacent neighborhoods as well. So connectivity to, to the trails. There's a policy in regards to establishing a long-term strategies for park and trail linkages which are components of the plan, but these strategies um, and are a little different and they go much deeper. They go into mo more of the, what are the grants that are available? What is the monetary um, resources? What are the staff resources that are required? Um, who are our partners that we could bring forward? And then another policy is expanding youth and teen recreation programs. Um, so that is uh, addressing one of the key area of voices that we heard from the public as well. And then our community services and facilities goals and policies for that element, you'll see here, and you'll notice the, the key one is always developing a plan. So I stated earlier, the general plan is, of course, general, um, and it's broad. So each one of these different plans that are being proposed are really important. And so we, in this section or this element, we're, um, we have a policy that it states develop a facilities master plan um, that is to not only address the facilities that you currently have today, but also the growth that will be coming here today as it's, occur it's occurring, but also into the future. We have a couple other policies and goals. One is to um, prioritize and pr the pursuit of grants. So private grants, government grants, um, and putting a plan together and prioritizing um, what is important and looking at those partners again in order to address the different um, uh, proposed plans, the facility plan, the park plan, circul circulation plan. And so th the burden of financing some of those key amenities for the community should not be just a burden on the, the town itself, but also the opportunity to leverage um, the federal federal grants, the state grants, and other grants um, that are available. And then there's a policy in regards to developing and establishing a plan for water, sewer, and stormwater master plan. So these are the high level ones. There are a number of other policies um, that support each one of these as well. And finally, our economic development element. And this is a little different. You'll see here the focus is on, a, you know, recruiting and attracting um, different businesses and uh, industries, opportunity for um, the revenue generating type of uses within your community, but also um, businesses that are needed to, to give a well-rounded um, community or a mix of uses. One of the um, policies that's in the, the, this element specifically is a focus on business attraction and how to focus on business attraction and focus on industries that are complementary to the values uh, of the vision or the values of the people and focus on obtaining the vision that we have as uh, overall of the general plan. And then the old home manor, this is going to be very important to provide a mix of uses. So how can you, how can you guide that to make sure that the, that right mix of uses is focused in on old home manner as different developers come in and potentially present different development um, proposals to you. 
Well, that goes back to that area development plan. And that area development plan, that's very, it gets down one level more, and it gets detailed, and it, it um, provides you not the big purple area, but exactly where those key different uses should be and how they work together and integrated. So um, another policy is making sure that your town's branding is consistent and it is weaved throughout everything that the town has the opportunity to have control over. And that is inclusive of wayfinding, your gateway signage um, on the north side and south side of 89, for example, your historic center and other centers as well. And then the final goal that I'm gonna be presenting tonight is the long-term financial stability. If there's one thing we heard from the very first meeting that we met with you as well as the council is financial stability and the health of the uh, financial health of the town. So as you move forward, that every decision you make and um, in moving forward with, and specifically here, and there's a number of um, financial stability um, policies, uh, is tourism, the tourism industry. So the tourism industry, we, we believe, is going to be one of your key opportunities for bringing in the revenue above and beyond um, just your neighborhood um, commercial. And at this time, I'd like to open it up for questions. Thank you for your presentation. Um, so does the commission have any questions? We've heard this information multiple times. It's uh, very clear and concise. Commissioner Switzer, do you have anything to say? All right. Uh, I don't, Chairman, I don't at this time. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anybody else? So don't take that as a negative because we've heard this information multiple times. Multiple, multiple times, not as much as the steering committee, which I would like to offer compliments to them for their efforts. Um, these two folks, I see at every meeting I've been to. Um, so I think right now we're going to be good to go. I don't have any questions. I studied this thing out. There's a lot of information in there. It's a lot of a lot more detailed than the one that we worked on in 2014 but then the information in the community was completely different at that point in time too, so. All right, we may call you back up at some point. Okay, I'm good, thank you. Can I take a break? Oh, no, leave one, leave one. All right, so I'm gonna open up the public portion of the meeting now um, to anybody that would like to come up and speak. As we said earlier, we're gonna try to answer the questions as they're asked. We have a much smaller turnout than was anticipated, so this hopefully will be able to move forward and get questions answered quickly. You got three minutes to do it, and then the answers will be as concise as possible. Did anybody sign in to speak? Okay, so. That means I'm gonna ask somebody that wants to speak to raise their hand, I'll point you out, step up to the podium, state your name, and then ask your question, and we will do our best at this time to answer that question. Would anybody in the public part of the building like to speak in this meeting on this item? Okay, so nobody has volunteered. I'm going to close that portion of the meeting. And again, I'm gonna just make another statement about this. I don't take that as a negative because the community has participated a lot in this process according to the consultants. There was a fairly high percentage compared to other communities of community participation. And this information again has been out on the website, published many multiple meetings. Um, so the fact that there's not very many public here tonight is a good sign that people are satisfied that we've done our duty here. Okay. So the next step would have been response, which there is none. So this is another chance for the Planning and Zoning Commission to have questions for staff or the consultant at this point. 
Commissioner Switzer, I'm going to give you another shot. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, can you hear me okay? Yes, sir. I'd just like to thank uh, the Matrix team, uh, town staff, the council, everybody on the Planning and Zoning Commission, the Steering Committee, and all the citizens that got involved. Um, I think this is a well, much improved plan for uh, going looking forward. And uh, I look forward to be on PNZ with this new plan. It's going to make our jobs a lot easier. We won't have the, <clears throat> excuse me, we won't have the conflict that we had with the 2014 general plan. So going forward, I think this is going to be a real asset to the town. Any other comments? All right, thank you, Commissioner Switzer. Um, I think he speaks for all of us in a compliment to how this was conducted and done. So I'm going to close the public hearing part of this meeting. And we've listened to the presentation, had opportunity to speak. And now I'm going to entertain a motion for passing this on to the town council. I make a motion to pass the general 2040 general plan as been presented to us on to town council. So you're recommending approval to the council? Yes. Also, Second. do we need to list the change with the state park, or no. is that already included That's in state it? park wording? Yes. Was that in their current draft that they got? No. no. Yes, so you would need to include that. That is... I had an alternative plan. And yes. There is an alternative plan, but the language was a little confusing, and so they clarified that language and made it more um, able for people to understand it. All right. Can we bring that wordage up, please, so that Commissioner, Commissioner Metters can step out and do it? Okay. I make a motion to forward for recommendation the 2040 Chino Valley General Plan to Town Council, including policy LU 8.4 for an alternative land use if the state park does not go through. I'll second that. Okay, so we have a motion and second, and just for the record to make sure that this doesn't have any confusion, policy LU 8.4 states that if the 980 acres are not designated a state park per legis state legislation, then the future land use map for the 980 acres will revert to the alternate future use illustrated in figure 3.2 on the map. So that's read into the record. So we have a motion and we have a second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Oh, wait a minute. Roll call vote. <laughs> you got to earn your money. <laughs> Commissioner Switzer? Uh, yes. Commissioner Welker? Yes. Commissioner Matters? Yes. Chair Merritt? Yes. So the vote is Other unanimous. Vote. Again, thank you, everybody who worked on this so diligently. Okay, so we're going to move forward to information items. First item is staff. Do we have any of those things? Okay, anybody from the commission wish to speak? Nobody wants to do that either, and the chair is going to take a pass this meeting on speaking. All right, so now we come to the public portion of the meeting. If you would like to, if you're a member of the public and would like to speak, you can talk about anything you want that we have anything to do with except what's on the agenda tonight. Anybody like to step forward? All right, we're done with that one. So now we come to the final one, the meet the E, adjourn. Do we have a motion? I make a motion for adjournment. Most second. Second. We have multiple seconds in all in favor? Aye. 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 Again, thank you everybody for your time. <coughs> I should have voted nay just mm -hmm. for Switzer's sake. <laughs>